my name is Gareth Davis. Um, the talk I'm sort of going to do today, I don't, I don't want to sort of present particularly sort of grand narrative, but I just want to talk a bit really about kind of my experience, the experience of Trenton Peak um, in the last sort of six or seven years. Um, we've been going in uh, sort of one guise or another since 1967, initially as the Trent Valley Archaeology Research um, uh, Committee always as part of the University of Nottingham until 2011 where uh, we, got, we got kicked out. Um, didn't quite sort of align with, with their priorities and then um, for, fortunately found a new home as part of the York Archaeological Trust. Um, and as I'm sure a lot of people know, uh, the York Archaeological Trust, um, uh, and this is a strap line from our sort of latest strategy, um, has, a, has a genuine commitment to building better lives through heritage. Um, this is a sort of a, a picture of the, uh, the, the Viking Centre, the Orbit Viking Centre. Um, and that kind of atmosphere um, gave us a real kind of opportunity um, to develop our um, sort of community projects. Um, in addition, you know, we had a new office then as well. This is our office now, um, out sort of to the west of uh, Nottingham and Beeston. Um, and we kind of um, uh, wanted to sort of, you know, develop our kind of identity and rooted in our community as well as in, in a kind of a new, a new situation. So the opportunity really came about with the last round of the, uh, the CBA um, Community Archaeology Training bursaries. Um, and we got um, this lady, Genevieve Carver, in under the trainee um, scheme. It was really, really good in terms of not only sort of receiving the training, but also kind of engaging in project development as well. And I must say, really, it was a learning experience for myself as well in the kind of project development. So um, this is just a little sort of schematic that sort of shows that, you know, our traditional sort of work has been the kind of commercial Trent Valley um, gravels work. Um, but then in that sort of period, um, 2012 through to 2015, 16, we did grow in the kind of largely heritage lottery funded, but also some partners as well, some other, you know, sort of Partners, um, you know, from four percent to fifteen percent. So I just want to sort of go through a couple of the sort of the smaller early projects we did. This is um, um, an allotment uh, archaeology project we did at St Anne's, uh, which is, if anyone knows, not in the sort of inner city area. But this is a very large green open area, um, uh, registered park and garden. Um, you know, really sort of diverse community of. Um, uh, a lot of a lot of the tenants we worked with the association had to do. Uh, the actual sort of con project concept was really interesting. We did sort of shovel testing, um, building up a distribution to be in open areas in sort of uh, medieval times. Um, but the kind of the, the main sort of engagement angle was um, we sort of create, helped the residents create these memory boxes, um, and we contributed to site interpretation. So I must say these projects initially aren't um, they're not threat led. So there's a couple of sort of slightly different angles there. Um, but really we felt that once this project had, was done, you know, they had achieved enrichment and engagement, but there wasn't really much, much legacy per se. So we looked sort of quite close to our offices, just further to the west. Um, if anyone knows the area, Attenborough Nature Reserve, it's um, a former um, aggregate extraction area, it was all sort of trashed without any kind of archaeological recording from the 1930s onwards. All of the finds dispersed in various local museums. We thought this is a great opportunity actually to kind of almost kind of hunt the art through the archives um, and kind of try and recreate maybe a bit of a fuzzy narrative, but you know, could we actually sort of uh, tell the story of the reserve and slightly redress the balance? Because we you know, obviously partnering with the Muscular Wildlife Trust, um, very much a concentration on the natural world but really nothing on, on, on heritage. So we thought this project <laughs> achieved a bit more, um, but actually because it was just kind of smaller, a smaller grant, um, it was quite short-lived. Um, we had really great, in the sort of consultation, and um, we actually created a group, the Attenborough and Arosh Heritage Explorers. We had very, very good kind of casual buy-in. Um, we did a, an assessment, um, and that ended up in kind of plotting all the distributions, and we actually created a, a 
heritage trail. Sorry. Um, a heritage trail, um, which is still there, and you can access the website as well. But beyond a little sort of temporary exhibition and some of the finds from the University of Nottingham Museum, there wasn't really any kind of sort of lasting output. Um, and one thing that we learned from that is that um, you really do need kind of strong community leads, I think, in, in the projects, and it, you know, it should be community-led, really. Um, and because of that, it sort of, it didn't really continue as a, an active thing um, after the, the, the time, you know, the, the duration of the project. So the project I then want to concentrate on for the rest work that we did then um, at the site of Lenton Priory. Now, this is slightly different because it kind of combines um, commercial work um, and also then kind of community project that's developed and, and hopefully a bit more of a legacy as well. Um, so, you may not know, um, but Lenton Priory was um, you know, a fantastically large, wealthy Cluniac Priory, second only <coughs> Um, second uh, in, in, in England in the early 1100s, I think in the sort of scale of um, Southern Minster, um, but there now is only one remaining column on the east end of the church. Um, it's a scheduled site, but it was you know, really quite an underplayed heritage asset. However, there was then an opportunity um, when Nottingham's new tram line, um, the Net 2, so uh, two lines were put in. Uh, going from Clifton into the centre, and then out from Toton, which you may have mentioned ended up with HS2, through into the centre of Nottingham. And for anyone who knows Nottingham, uh, Lenton is here, that's behind the Queen's Medical Centre, the big hospital. Um, that is now the Gregory Street tram stop. But um, that development, um, very large, you know, 250 million development, gave us an opportunity to look at some areas around the site. Um, the outer precinct, which may be in the site of the market or fair, and then the main kind of conventional church itself. Very little was known about the state of preservation, but we started to find stuff and that generated um, interest in the press. Just a very, very quick sort of run through of some of the results. Um, we had a sequence from the start of the priory um, a sort of defend, defended ditches going down to the River Lee, and then some quite early sort of regular preservation, waterlogged um, deposits and leather, um, evidence of uh, trade and exchange activities going on from the sort of 12, uh, well, sort of 13th, 14th century onwards. And then um, by the 1400s, 1500s, a lot of sort of um, cell like plots where actually there were market stalls. <coughs> Uh, post holes, etc., from market stores. Evidence of trade and exchange. This is a, um, from uh, a scale pack and balancing scales um, with a, um, a brass worker's seal on it. Um, and also some very nice architectural Romanesque stone as well. We also then, when all the services were diverted from the, the tram track, had some very nice archaeology around the conventional church. This is the, um, the southern wall of the Northern Cloister Range, which was almost slap bang in this 80 centimetre trench here. Um, and some Anglo Saxon pottery, late Anglo Saxon pottery, underneath the cloister as well. So that generated a lot of interest. And we were very, very pleased then that the, um, the local councillors, the Nottingham City Council local councillors, gave us £5,000 from their, their pot. Um, to actually sort of uh, coincide with the CBA Festival of Archaeology to get local volunteers doing geophysics in all of the green areas around. Uh, the standing church at the moment was uh, actually the site of the chapel, the medieval chapel, the, the bigger church down here. So we did the geophysics um, and we used that as a kind of, um, you know, a sprat to catch a big fish. Um, and through that, kind of, you know, lots of different volunteers had come in. We started, we then formed a partnership. So we had the Lenton Local History Society, uh, the main sort of bit of the Dunkirk and Lenton partnership formed the sort of the residence group, if you like. Uh, the, the developer, the tram, uh, the church, um, and then Historic England, because it is a, a scheduled site. We had sort of work 
quite closely with, with Tim Allen, the, the regional inspector there. Um, that led to um, a, a community archaeology project. We had a really, really good, sort of diverse uh, bunch of people engaging in uh, the archaeology. Um, from a kind of historic England point of view, um, it was also to do with you know, future management and potential interpretation of the site as well, in terms of you know, what sort of preservation was there there. Um, very good. Um, this is the northern uh, wall of the main uh, church, uh, preserved underneath a sort of three or four times rebuilt wall. This is a, the, the one standing column sort of excavated on the, on the east end of the main church. And you can see this very, even though it's been investigated a few times in the 1930s, etc. Very, very good preservation as well. So I suppose the main bit then is kind of like how successful this project was, really. We had, we, we had a very good experience in terms of the, um, the, the, the numbers of people, you can see some of the statistics here, the numbers of people that became interested, working with the residents group, it was a very sort of diverse community around Lenton. Um, you know, they were able to kind of help engage with a lot of people that maybe don't access heritage projects. You know, we, we now we've done quite a few of these. We often see the usual suspects turn up at a lot of the kind of the volunteer projects, but this was a bit different in character. And because we'd found remains of marketing fair sites, um, we also then we created the Martin Mass Fair, which is the, 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 the sort of the fair. Um, event of the ecclesiastical um, market, medieval market um, and fair site. Now, that wasn't in t uh, and that was a sort of a public event. However, after the project ended, um, we did continue it for a couple of years. We had a little bit of sort of seed funding to kind of continue the marketing mass fair. It was very well attended, five, six, seven hundred people. But by the time it was then handed over fully to the rest of the group, it carried on for another year. It didn't happen in 2018, so that, I see that as a bit of a, a bit of a failure. Um, but I think we have moved uh, the kind of the perception of heritage in Lenton on, um, and we kind of I think we have a sort of standing partnership now, um, which I think in the future could sort of uh, um, work really well. In particular, our um, our schools. Packages went down really, really well, um, and the sort of resources on the website <coughs> have been accessed quite a lot. As I said, Lenton, Lenton is a very interesting community, if anyone knows Nottingham. So you've got a mixture of sort of first, second, third generation immigrant families from uh, uh, parts of Asia and the Caribbean. You've also got an ageing white population who are not necessarily very active, but also comprise the, the Lenton Local History Society, and they're, they're, they're hugely enthusiastic with with knowledge, but not sort of particularly active in the kind of, the sort of practical archaeology sense. You've also got a huge uh, proportion of students as well. Now, the student community is really interesting because you've got a sort of transitory, you know, kind of three-year life cycle, and you can kind of form relationships. You know, you might get some good students, but then they they kind of off. And I think the the work on the kind of social contract with the university is very quite quite you know sort of close to the site. Is something that could be developed a bit further, I think. So there's some, some interesting issues in terms of groups that don't traditionally access heritage projects, but all, and, and some challenges as well with the kind of movement of people through. But I think, actually, um, in terms of like local plans now um, and the councillors as well, you know, we are starting to raise the profile of heritage, you know, and use that positively within Lenton. So, for example, it's, it's a little bit twee, but we now have, as you come into Dunkirk with Lenton, a community since 1107, um, and there's quite a bit of engagement you know, around the erection of that, that sign. Um, and I think one of the interesting things then is, is kind of future possibilities. Um, in the last year, we've had this, this, is a, this isn't the actual Norman font, this is a reconstruction um, of font that's been placed by NCC in Priory Park. Now Priory Park was very, very run down, lots of sort of, uh, you know, drunks and that sort of thing. And 
but they've now got sort of artwork that has kind of heritage, um, you know, see, see through the priory in it. Um, and that's been really sort of positive in kind of regenerating some of these green spaces that are a bit underused. Next year, we're planning um, with the University of Nottingham um, a exhibition on the archaeology of the tram. So I think that that'll be another one that hopefully kind of generates um, some more sort of enthusiasm and publicity. Um, and I think you know, in terms of this standing partnership that has now um, emerged, um, especially with the church, we have had con conversations about potentially developing you know an attraction, a heritage centre, um, you know maybe even representing some of the monument now. One of the issues we've got is that that's then a bit of a step change. We were very lucky in 2012 that we had the CBA first. It's simply a huge amount of project development to go to that next you know, large lottery stage, whilst we're also managing our kind of commercial operations. So that's a little bit of a, um, you know, a thing that we have to work through, I think, um, in due course. Well, I hope we do, because it, it's a really good site. So I suppose the very final thing, and just to sort of finish up, really, is that. We've also kind of been lobbying um, uh, uh, within the city council um, uh, about, about and the, the, the interest. And, and that's become particularly pertinent in the last few years because uh, led by the sort of development management section um, within the city council, they've produced a, a heritage strategy. I think part of that is because Nottingham Castle redevelopment is, is, is a 24.9 million pound redevelopment, um, you know, largely lottery funding, lottery and the city council. And I think, you know, Historic England and uh, HLF wanted to see a kind of strategy to that. Now, obviously that's got a kind of trickle down effect then to other projects that might want to kind of bid the money. So we lobbied really to get our Lenton Priory um, within the kind of the action plan, and it appears within the action plan in this proposed project. And I think that was quite important, um, and hopefully that will kind of continue um, in the future. So as I said, no kind of sort of grand narrative, but that's just sort of the experience that I've had in the last sort of six, seven years, moving from smaller projects into slightly larger projects. You know, someone's where well, we feel like we've got some aspects of good, um, you know, sort of positive legacy. Certainly, you know, within the lifetime of the projects, um, good kind of results and engagement.